Hello, Cruel World, and welcome to a very special kind of live episode of I Love This. You should, too. My name is Indy Backstage Randawa, and with me is my lovely co-host, Samantha Beergarden Randawa. And where are we right now, Sam? Uh, we are backstage at the Folk Fest, uh, living the good life. So today's episode might sound not as good. We're going to try to record this out here. It may sound terrible. It may never actually come out, but that's the plan. Uh, yeah, we're in a quite a loud place. There's a lot of people around, so we'll see uh, what happens. That's the beauty of Folk Fest. You never know. <laughs> you do never know. But first, we're going to go see... Daka Braka. They are a band I don't know much about. They have some cool outfits. We saw them walking around backstage. And yeah, they have these incredible furry hats. And uh, I'm really excited to hear what they sound like. They're from Ukraine. That's about all I know. But uh, let's maybe we, you can hear some of it now if my recording works. And let's go check them out. Well, that was quite a show. I am so excited to listen to more of their stuff when we get home this week. Uh, Indy, what did you think? They were a lot of fun. It was much more eclectic than I imagined. There were parts of it where it kind of sounded like Portishead filtered through Ukrainian folk music. They had a wide variety of instruments, lots of different sizes of uh, squeeze boxes. Uh, great outfits like we had said before and they did one song where they used a lot of uh, imagery from the war in Ukraine and here in Edmonton we have a really large Ukrainian population of just historically and now especially because a lot of refugees are living here so that was a, a pretty powerful moment on the hill. Yeah it was some incredibly powerful imaging and uh, the brought something that I haven't heard to the Folk Fest before. So that's really cool to see some of the more international acts getting recognition like that. So up next is Feist, someone that I saw exactly 10 years ago, almost to the day, here at Folk Fest. And I'm excited to see her again and uh, hear some of her new music. Yeah, there's nothing better than a hill filled with people singing or screaming, like making wolf howling sounds, for instance. They don't sound like very hungry wolves. Yeah. 
So that was incredible. I do kind of wish she'd played one, two, three, four as it is on the record, but I can just go home and listen to it tonight. Um, I guess she had some really interesting uh, microphone sound effects happening and uh, her band is really great. Yeah, so this was the headliner on our first day of four, right? Yeah, four. (laughs) And it was kind of like a trip down memory lane because I was listening to all of this music in my first couple of years of university. She was really big here and to see that all again or hear that all again. And there was a great part in the middle where her band left and it was just her doing kind of like an acoustic set. Yeah. Yeah. It was really interesting um, to hear the range of music that she makes and uh, just kind of feel her journey through the years. And she did a lot of looping. Like I saw her pretty early on in her career, so there wasn't this kind of stuff going on, but she did this, a lot of looping effects. That was a lot of fun. She did new arrangements on songs that we had heard in the past, which I kind of like the classic version better, but it was nice to see all the new stuff she's doing with it. Yeah, absolutely. And we got something that you rarely get on Thursday night because of noise restrictions we got an encore and we ended up we actually had left our seats already and ended up running back to the stage so we could see it so that's kind of fun and it was nice because a lot of other people had left so we got to walk right up front so that was nice too (laughs) well that's the end of day one see you tomorrow for day two but uh that'll just be like two seconds for you guys (laughs) good night Hello everyone, welcome to day two. Um, We are on our way to stage one where Tammy Nielsen, Kunta Penas, and Asanabi are playing a session stage and hopefully it's magical.
All right, Sam, how did you like that session? We got to see three different acts all performing together. That session was like a quintessential folk fest experience because you got to see people borrowing members and instruments from other bands and kind of working together to make this really eclectic like world music kind of sound and i don't think there's going to be many more opportunities where we see or hear asanavi with uh, congas and saxophone and because he borrowed a few guys from kitapenyas and the, the whole mix, the, everyone was just kind of playing a bit of everything, and I kind of love to see that, because that's another way where you're going to hear something that you couldn't hear anywhere else, because these people are probably never going to be together again. And that is the magic of Folk Fest. It's this eclectic group of artists who then get to make magic together on tiny little stages. Well, coming up in a bit, I think the next thing we're probably going to hear is some Fleet Foxes. So I think we're going to go try to stake out a spot on the hill, join someone else's tarp because we don't have one, and listen to some Fleet Foxes in the dark. Samantha, describe the scene for everyone. Uh, so we're sitting just to the side of the main stage while Fleet Foxes plays their set and we're staring at the view of the river valley and this little city that Folk Fest creates every year. Well, things are clearing out now. Sam, how were Fleet Foxes? Oh, they were fantastic. A little bit too much backlighting for me, but I really enjoyed the music. I kind of forgot that like, I really like Fleet Foxes. I haven't seen them in, or I haven't heard, listened to them in quite a while, but when that first album came out, they were on steady rotation, and I think I kind of uh, underestimated them. <laughs> you went, came back in love with them? I think so. I'm going to go home. Well, we're not going to go home, actually. I was about to say I'm going to go home and listen to a bunch. But we're wrapping up here on day two. It feels like we've had a full festival, but we are only getting started. <laughs> we have um, Kimmy Javante tonight at the party, and we're going to be up real late. <laughs> And then there's two actual long days. These were the short days. Yes. So uh, let's uh, rally. We're going to go to the party and uh, maybe we'll record there too. Woo! So you're ready for the party. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it's bright and sunny and it's what, Saturday? Morning-ish? Saturday afternoon. afternoon. But we kind of didn't record anything last night, but uh, we can just update what happened yesterday, Samantha. Um, I met Isnabi uh, just randomly backstage and he was super super nice and wants to be on our podcast so that could be coming soon. That'd be fun <laughs> and then we did go to the after party party and uh, Kimmy Jabute was playing and 
maybe not a lot of people around are fans, but I still own physical media, so he signed a CD for me, and that was cool, and we got home at around three. We couldn't record any of his set in there, but it was fantastic, and we're going to watch him again today. But now we are camped out, and during sound check for Chawa, which is maybe the performance that I was most excited for. Yeah, and they're doing some fun covers for Soundcheck, so I'm really excited about this show. Let's go. show exactly as good as I had hoped and expected. Um, I know we're only kind of halfway through things, but that was my performance of the festival thus far, and I think it's going to rank all time for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they we like stood and danced the entire time, and it was fantastic, and I cannot wait to see them again tonight. And I just like loved that folk festival that was probably one of my folk fest moments and also super nice all of them i got them to sign my cd which was fun and then we ran into them in the back and we chatted with them and a lot of the times with the people we are seeing here i have no concept of how famous they are so when it's someone like this they commented on like oh yeah you knew the words and that's cool to see because most people in Edmonton probably don't know them. Yeah, absolutely. I always try not to like bug the artist, but like last night when I got to talk to Isanabi and just like tell him how incredible his music is and how much it meant to me. It's those kind of moments that I feel like make it for the artists to be here. And I, I love to talk to them as well. (laughs) So Chawa, my favorite thus far, but next uh, Kimi Jabate is coming up and I can stay right here. Samantha, you're off to the beer garden for a little bit? Yeah, I need to go put in some FaceTime with my dad and my stepmom and uh, I will be back for main stage. I thought you were gonna say some FaceTime with some beers. So a little bit of both. You go do that. I'm gonna hang out and watch Kimi Jabate. Even though I saw him last night, you know what? It's so good, I'm gonna see him again. <laughs>
So Kimmy Jabate was great again. We here in Edmonton are not a very dancey people, so sometimes I feel bad when artists are like, come on, everyone dance, and we, they just sit there. But at least we got everybody up towards the uh, towards the end. So he hopefully didn't feel too rejected by, by this audience, but it was nice because I kind of knew the words again from last night we saw him, and he was kind of teaching everyone how to sing along in a language that we don't know. So I was ready for it this time. And a, a great show again. Maybe one of my favorites of the festival, but there are so many good things. So let's go. I don't know what we're going to be doing next, but talk to you soon. All right. I'm not sure where we left things off, but it is Sunday, last day now. And last night, oh, last night was the parties, and we didn't get home until like 4 30. But uh, what did we see at the parties? Uh, we saw Chawa and Quintapenas, and we danced for about four hours. I reached my 10,000 steps before we went to bed last night, and uh, it was an incredible party. We had so much fun, and uh, we got to see a lot of people we know, too. And I'm all turned around on one thing, uh, Folk Fest. And before, I was someone who, I don't care about the artists as, like, people not in the way like I don't care about you but I'm not interested I don't get a thrill of meeting famous people because I'm like you're good at that thing that doesn't mean I'd like you in anything else but everybody that we've met and I'm talking Chawa specifically for me but we've met a few other bands they've all been so nice so gracious and generous with their time and you never want to keep somebody and we're adjacent to important people we're not important ourselves no. but all of these artists just they treat us and everyone else so well and they're so gracious in uh, accepting praise and talking to whoever wants to talk because I guess that's kind of one of those festival things, right? If you're coming out and you're going to these other parts of the festival, not just you performing, clearly you want to be with, with everybody else and experience this and that's been a pretty fun experience. Yeah, that's one of the things that's magical about Folk Fest is Everyone here isn't like famous famous. We're not seeing huge stadium show people. We're seeing people who are so excited to hear that people listen to their album and that they know some of the words and like just to hear some feedback. And it's just always so lovely to get to talk to people who are just excited to be playing their music. All right, well, we're going to get things started. I'm on the day, last day. I'm seeing Dedicated Men of Zion. Sam, you're going to your favorite uh, event. What was that again? Uh, the Beer Garden with my dad. <laughs> so I'll check in after Dedicated Men of Zion, who always look good and put on a good show. got out at Dedicated Men of Zion, and it was probably about 30 degrees, which is uh, hot in Celsius for you Americans out there, but they were still out there wearing three-piece suits, uh, a lot of energy, just a fantastic show. I kind of don't get why all religious stuff can't be this joyful, because they are a, a great gospel and soul band. Oh, and something else is about to start right here, but I had to get that in. They were fantastic. They were out in the crowd, uh, dancing with people. Everybody came out at one point or another. 
Oh, and here we have, it's Kim. How's it going, Kim? It's Kim, it's me. You might be the first guest star ever, we'll see. That's so exciting. <laughs> I feel like I deserve to be the first guest star though. Maybe. I mean, I am a long time listener. And maybe none of this audio is usable and you won't hear any of it, but what'd you just see and how'd you like it, Kim? I loved it. The dedicated men of Zion were pretty damn good. I saw them earlier too. They did a kind of a mishmash session and they did really good too. Even me, I got the urge to like jump up and go testify, preach, brother. <laughs> Lady, it gets you. It gets Amen. you. It got me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> setting on our final folk fest day we're gonna go see a little bit of main stage and of course four strong winds at the end which we'll probably have to talk about when we get there but we just finished dinner but before that we got to see Asa Navi and finally after hearing him say it a few times I feel like I'm pronouncing it correctly I feel confident <laughs> but Sam how was that I don't think I have words for how powerful that was. It was really, really amazing. And it was like um, just so moving. And uh, we've had like such an incredible day at the festival. We got to see some really cool things. And that was just such a great cap for me on an incredible day. And we're not even done. And we've been talking about the artists a lot and rightfully so. But there is some other cool things that were going on here. Like, we went into a teepee right before and got to do some smudging. Yeah, um, the teepee was built by someone I'm related to, actually. And so that was pretty moving and powerful to get to meet um, a great two great aunts and get to sit and hear some stories and do some smudging with her. That was really amazing. And then we went and saw Isanabi, and I may have cried for, like, the first three songs. <laughs> And fair, I feel like a lot of people on the hill were crying. And yeah, he's a, a fantastic performer, a lot of stage presence, and a super nice guy we've learned as well. So we can't say anything good enough about the people that we've uh, seen and had the opportunity to meet. But let's go to main stage. Maybe we'll record some. Who knows? This is a very haphazard whole episode. Um, hopefully it works out. Let's go to the main stage.
biggest joint I ever saw was in Canada. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. It was the biggest. It was a baseball bat. <laughs> it was the size of a bat. <laughs> Not only was it the size of a bat, but he was in the front row. <laughs> and the only thing about front row smokers is I get high. <laughs> and when I'm up here high, it's a different trip. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ben Harper just rapped, and Sam, how was that for you? That was incredible. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was just like the perfect thing to end the weekend on. We got very fortunate and stumbled into some first row seats, which felt like we were doing something wrong, but I guess somebody just left in the right time, so we got to watch uh, very up close, and the drummer from Chawa, Joe Galini, was sitting he asked if he could sit next to us, so then he hung out and uh, w- was a great audience member. It seemed like he really enjoyed himself, too. Yeah, it's always fun to watch musicians watch other musicians and just, like, reverence. It's amazing. And also, it's nice being next to the drummer. We were on time for all the clapping, I'm sure. <laughs> I was looking at him at the corner of my eye. <laughs> but things are just wrapping up here on the final night. It's super dark. And they are going to have the finale coming up right away, which is traditionally the four strong wins. I'm count of three. I want you to yell the best thing you saw all weekend. One, two, three. Ciao. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So, I want to thank everybody for being here, our volunteers, our patrons, our sponsors, our stakeholders. Absolutely everybody. You're a part of the magic and we can't do this without you and this is so awesome. All right, we are going to uh, bring to a close this weekend. There's been a lot of love this weekend. Ian Tyson wrote Four Strong Winds and we always sing that at the end. Many times Ian led the singing of Four Strong Wings, so we have a lot of memories of him. When we all sing this song, please give a few thoughts to Ian Tyson as we sing his song, which is our song, Four Strong Wings, tonight led by Jeremy Albino. Still I wish you'd change your mind 
We are back home in kitchen studio and exhausted after a wonderful Folk Fest weekend. It was a fantastic weekend. Um, guest of the show, Kimberly, uh, was like, you weren't kidding when you said that Folk Fest is a bit of a marathon. <laughs> True. So how many have you been to? Probably 32-ish. 32. Yeah. Where does this one rank? This might have been one of the best ones ever. Like, I, there are other um, folk fests that had, like, really cool moments where I got to, like, do some really cool stuff or um, years where I got to sit, like, right in the front row for a show. We went on stage and sang Four Strong Winds one year. Yes. and That, that was an all-time moment. That was um, the completion of, um, like, the folk fest grounds for me. Cause I've been everywhere on the folk fest grounds. And so that was pretty cool. But this was definitely the most well-rounded and enjoyable festival for me. It was. I've only been to five now. Five or six, yeah. And yeah, my favorite for sure. But also because we weren't working, which made it (laughs) great. But you know what? We're kind of doing our overall recap already. But we went to the parties uh, Sunday night. Yes. We came home very early. We were home by like 2.30 a.m. <laughs> which which is very early in comparison to Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday we when came we home at 4.30. we got home 4 almost 4.30, yeah. And then Friday was, I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, Friday was Kimmy Jabate. Yeah. We, that was another two. It's about but, 3 o'clock in the morning when we got home after that one. So we saw Zona Jabarte. And La Dame Blanche was playing as well. And we can't even go into great detail about how good they were. They were. But we had so many things going on. And one thing we didn't mention about all of the the parties, of course, Mm -hmm. the big things are the performers. But there's also all these other little sections to the party. Yes. Do you want to give a little behind the scenes uh, about the party of what people are missing if they don't go to those? Yeah. So along with two sets on kind of the main stage of the party, which is the biggest ballroom, there's also like an acoustic jam room um, downstairs uh, where a lot of the musicians who are staying at the hotel that the parties are at will just like bring down an instrument and they'll just like play some music. Um, and so that tends to be like a quieter room. Um, when we went down there, there was like all different kinds of instruments. There were some like uh, brass instruments. There was guitars. I think there were some other stringed instruments. It was pretty cool. And then uh, upstairs, there is a little room, which I think needs to be much bigger because we tried to go in this year and we couldn't even get through the door. But um, there is a sing-along room where people, uh, there's a band and they take requests and everyone in the room has books with lyrics in it. And you can just like sing along to songs that you know that are kind of folky. And um, yeah, it's it's like a nice quieter room as well. And uh, it's always a lot of fun in there too. In years past, we would spend way more time in those rooms mm-hmm. because it was kind of overwhelming after all of Folk Fest to go into a, like another 2 a.m. Crazy party. Crazy dance party. Yeah. But this year we were up for it oh, because yeah. we weren't exhausted we from tending ahead. bar. Yeah, we planned ahead. We knew what days we were going to party. And I think that really helped us out uh, staying for like the big dance parties. But usually I love that sing-along mm-hmm. room. And we got, we, they take requests. So you got to hear someone do a uh, Taylor Swift cover. And then I waited for some Bowie. Yes, and yeah. we were both uh, happy and left happy. This year, we were all about the parties, though. And you know what? They were all fantastic. Yeah. I was willing to not see someone on the hill if I knew that I was going to see them at the party after. Because yes. it is cool to see someone outdoors on the hill. Maybe it's noon or something. But Everybody's dancing. We, yeah. With many, many other people. But when you can see them at the party with 
maybe 100 people Mm -hmm. and maybe only 40 people really on the dance floor with you and you can just get right in there. Yeah. That's that's the way to see people. Yeah. Standing front row, dancing, getting like up close and personal with the artists is definitely something that like you can't really put a price tag on. So I guess that brings us to the end of Folk Fest (laughs) 2023. (laughs) Maybe we should say a few things. Um, Kimi Jabate. Yes. We mispronounced everything constantly throughout this episode. Oh my goodness, I know. Uh, Asanabi. Asanabi, yes. We heard him say it slow enough that we were able, we turned to each other and started saying it back to each other. Tammy Nelson. We called her Tammy Nielsen at one point. Oh, Tammy Nelson. Okay. I think those are the ones, <laughs> but then again, there might be more, and I might have just done it again with Sona Jabarte because we're remembering names, and a lot of them are trickier, and we're just remembering off the top of our heads, so sometimes we forget, but you know what? They'd forgive us. They would, <laughs> and we got to um, make some new friends. You've been uh, messaging on Instagram with some of the guys from Chawa. Yeah, and I'm already campaigning to get them to come back next year, yeah. and they're into it. So, hey, Folk Fest, D- make, make it, it happen. Up. Yeah, bring it back. They uh, they were so, so nice, and we got to sit next to the drummer during Four Strong Winds, and he was, like, so excited, genuinely excited to see us. So that was pretty cool. Lot, just nice people just all around. Wonderful. I think this festival kind of attracts that type of person, mm-hmm. both in the volunteers and also in the performers. Well, I have uh, heard stories of some performers, but like they were always bigger performers. Who, who were dicks. Who were dicks and um, had a lot of really like, there was one performer and I can't remember who it was now, um, who played a like um, the legacy concert, which they only did for a couple of years. It was on the Wednesday night before Folk Fest and it was a ticketed event as well. And uh, he was driven onto the grounds backstage in his town car, sat in his town car the whole time the openers were opening. And then all of the volunteers had to turn their backs as he got out of the car. What? Who is that? Oh, I need to look it up. Um, yeah, look it up and get back to me because I want to know it that. It was like this huge thing. It was like a really big person and I just like cannot remember who it was. And then um, this was a night when I got to be front row because we would won the tarp lottery and we got to be front row. And he played pretty much the entire show to his drummer. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like why did we waste all that time running the tarp so that we could just watch this guy's back? And you know what? We had a whole Folk Fest episode. We never talked about what running the tarp means and (laughs) the whole tarp situation, which is something that I didn't really understand until I became part of that world. But you know what? Maybe next year, our preview episode will also have tips for the aspiring Folk Fester. Yes. And maybe... We can pitch this to the Folk Fest people and say, like, hey, give us media passes or something. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, And I was talking to someone backstage and it was their first Folk Fest. And I was like, oh, well, if you have any questions, let me know. I've been to like 32 of these. And they were like, oh, so you do know everything. I was like, I have a wealth of knowledge that is kind of not going to use right now. So, yeah. I would also love to talk to artists and tell them what a Canadian crowd is like, mm-hmm. because a lot of people, it's a bit of a culture shock because we're not the most uh, exuberant people. Mm-mm. I am. I'm up there dancing, <laughs> but most people are not. So I'd love to give artists some tips on playing to a Canadian crowd. You can give audience members tips on how to have a great folk fest. But you know what? It's over already. So let's do that next year. Excellent. Yeah. And next year, I want to research more of the bands. We had so much fun because we knew a little bit about a just a fraction of the artists that were there. And you know who that is because we've been talking about the same people so much because we're big fans. Yeah, but I think that would just enrich the Folk Fest experience and getting to know even more artists and getting to like chat with people and impress them with our knowledge. Impress them with our knowledge. That's that's all I'm in it for. Yeah. Impressing people with knowledge. You know what? People are very rarely impressed with knowledge. I'm... In fact, they are annoyed by it. <laughs> And any, like, coworker I have right now is like, yeah, tell me about it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, yeah, I'm uh, really sad that Folk Fest is over for another year. I'm ready to go again. Me too. I've recovered. I'm, well, no, maybe not. Um, um, it was a lot of walking, but I uh, I cannot wait to go back to the hill. So if you're listening to this, uh, pitch us to Folk Fest people to be correspondents for the Folk Fest. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. And uh, beyond that, I guess, see you on the hill. Happy recording this because it's, somebody might get mad with me. But I believe y'all about the cutest bunch of people I've ever seen. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god, y'all know it too. I see how you smiling like I know. That's all beautiful. That's all that's beautiful. That's beautiful.